In this video, we're going to consider the same problem of an oscillator chain and uh, collective modes in the chain. But now we're going to study quantum collective modes or quantum phonons in a quantum oscillator chain. So this problem sounds uh, very complicated because we're going to be dealing with an infinite number of quantum degrees of freedom now. But as we shall see, uh, actually in the end of the day, the results are going to be very similar uh, to those in the classical case. So namely, the spectrum of quantum phonons apart from the zero point energy is going to be identical to the spectrum of classical phonons. Now to solve the problem first we uh, need to define what we want. So let me uh, consider a slightly simpler version of what we looked at uh, in the previous video. Now I'm going to study an oscillator chain consisting of the same type of oscillators and same type of atoms. So I have here identical atoms with a mass m and uh, identical oscillators, identical sort of springs. Now it's going to be quantum springs of sorts with a stiffness k. So this is the x coordinate. And the corresponding uh, classical Hamiltonian uh, associated with this uh, oscillator chain is uh, presented here. So uh, we have a sum going over all um, these atoms. So n here is, uh, so let's say this is going to be n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So it just labels uh, the atoms. And uh, x sub n uh, is uh, the position of the uh, corresponding atom. Now this is of course the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy. So it's essentially the same Hamiltonian we had before, but now just for a single species of atoms, if you want. Now, um, to go to quantum problem, we need to quantize this Hamiltonian. We need to make it quantum. So how do we do this? Well, it turns out that actually it's very uh, easy to do so. So it's as easy as it was in the case of a single uh, harmonic oscillator. So all we have to do is just to put hats uh, on top of H, uh, P, and X. So, um, uh, may, which means that we made these um, variables in the classical case into operators in the quantum problem. So, for example, if we're working in a position space, so let's say uh, P sub N is uh, simply a derivative minus I H bar D over D X N. So it acts only on the nth coordinate of, an, of the nth oscillator. Now, uh, this uh, x and p, they satisfy the uh, canonical commutation relations. So if they correspond to the same atom, so uh, x, n, and p, n, uh, they commute uh, to i h bar. If they correspond to a different atom, let's say if n is not equal to, uh, well, let's say if we have x, n, and p, m, so then it's going to be zero if n is not equal to n. So and we can uh, sort of unify these commutation relations by writing a, a delta symbol here. So which means that it's equal to i h bar uh, one if n equals to m and zero otherwise. So this this is what it means to to quantize this uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So now the next step uh, we're going to perform is we're going to use our definition of the creation and annihilation operators that was uh, in, that were introduced uh, in the solution of the uh, single harmonic oscillator, and uh, we're going to represent uh, each uh, coordinate x and and momentum p and through the corresponding creation and annihilation operators a and a dagger. So here at the same you can check going back to the first segment um, of the lecture today is that uh, as a matter of fact these are exactly the same definitions we used before but now uh, we just have this additional index n which refers to the uh, atoms in this chain and of course these uh, creation and annihilation operators they satisfy their own canonical commutation relations as here so they uh, commute with one another their commutator is equal to zero if they correspond to different atoms and otherwise uh, if they correspond to the same atom a n commutator with a dagger n is equal to one so what we're going to do now we're going to plug in this expression uh, of x and p through a and a dagger into this hamiltonian and let me do that so if we do so uh, the hamiltonian takes uh, this form which actually appears to be uh, a more 
complicated looking form since there are more terms here than we had before but uh, we are on our way to solving the problem so um, the strategy for solving the problem would be actually different uh, from uh, the uh, sort of typical solution in single particle quantum mechanics where we're dealing with the Schrodinger equation and wave function so here of course we still would like to uh, solve uh, the Schrodinger equation we have in mind this um, Schrodinger equation but we don't uh, worry too much at this stage about the form of the wave functions we just want to know the energies that are possible in this uh, in this system just like in the previous video we just worried about the spectrum of the dispersion relation of classical waves so here we want to know the dispersion relations for quantum waves so how do we do this? Uh, so in order to solve the problem here, instead of working with the wave functions, we're going to be working with the operators themselves. And we're going to try to transform the Hamiltonian into a new simpler form. So that uh, basically we're going to be looking for a new set of operators. We're going to go from the operators, let's say a n and a n dagger with all possible n's to new operators. Let me call it, let's say b q and b q dagger such that the form of the Hamiltonian in terms of this uh, new creation and annihilation operators is going to be much simpler than the uh, form which is written here. So basically uh, the uh, challenge here is to find a linear transformation of the original operators into a new form such that the Hamiltonian which looks simple and that such that the solution to this Hamiltonian would be known. So uh, this is a bit of a technical uh, challenge and a technical exercise. So, and uh, the first step in this exercise is just to write the Hamiltonian in terms of this A and A dagger as is. So we have to basically expand these brackets and calculate the square of these brackets, which leads to a rather lengthy expression as here. So, and um, I have omitted here an uh, overall constant. There could be a constant which corresponds essentially to uh, an energy shift and also i have written it in a slightly more friendly form uh well it's not as long as i could have written it because uh, of this term which uh, is uh, corresponds to hermitian conjugate so basically i have this guy so you can just work it out and we can work it work it out as an exercise if you want so uh, and you will see that you have many many terms and uh, each term uh, in, in, in here must be compensated with the hermitian conjugate from somewhere else because the uh, Hamiltonian in the end of the day must be Hermitian operator. So, and uh, in this case, it simplifies our life a little bit uh, because we don't have to write two lengthy expressions, but still it looks pretty bad. So there are a lot of terms we don't wanna see. So we don't know what the spectrum, what the solution of this Hamiltonian is. We, we see a bunch of these A and A daggers in various combinations, and we see also couplings between uh, different sides, etc., etc. So in order to solve this uh, Hamiltonian in the way I just described, that is to find new set of operators that uh, simplifies form. So just like in the classical case, it's convenient to perform a Fourier transform. But now it's going to be a Fourier transform for uh, the uh, creation and annihilation operators themselves. So what we have here is a, a representation of the annihilation here and the creation operators in terms of some other operators a sub q and a sub q dagger so i use the same symbols but this is really uh a different operators and so this a sub q are in a sense uh, Fourier images of this a sub n and uh, so the two are related by this Fourier transform which now is an integral going from minus pi to pi so um and uh, it's not from minus infinity to plus infinity because we have a periodic array of these oscillators not a continuum of oscillators so it's more like actually for a series rather than for a transform that we're using in any case i'll be using this uh symbol here so uh integral with the subscript q which to uh sort of label all uh the terms that i have here and uh, in these notations for example the Fourier transform of the creation operator is uh, presented here so it can be obtained from this one simply by conjugating uh, both sides. So that's why I have a minus sign here as opposed to a plus sign here. 
So there are a couple of identities that I uh, want to emphasize without deriving them. So the first one is the sum over all integers, basically over all the oscillators in our problem. And uh, so n goes from zero, plus minus one, plus minus two, etc. So, and if I sum over all, all these n's, these uh, exponentials will give rise to two pi times the delta function. And uh, sort of the inverse identity to it, if I integrate the exponential uh, from minus pi to pi, so then uh, the right-hand side is going to be a delta symbol. So this integral is equal to zero if n is not equal to zero, n is equal to one, uh, well, in trivial way otherwise. I'm mentioning these identities because they're very useful in deriving uh, a form of the uh, Hamiltonian in the Q-space from the Hamiltonian we uh, derived in the previous slide in real space, which is uh, which was dependent on the index n. And uh, this derivation, uh, which takes a little bit of time and effort, I will leave mostly to you. And this will be one of uh, problems in your upcoming homework for self-assessment. And probably this is going to be the most complicated problem there. However, there is one important uh, identity that I want to prove explicitly here, and this will be an identity involving um, a commutator of two uh, Q-space uh, operators. So, um, again, our goal would be to um, rewrite the Hamiltonian in terms of this uh, A sub Q and A sub Q dagger. And I refer to these guys as annihilation and creation operators, but I haven't proven that there are indeed such operators. So what does it mean for them to be creation annihilation operators? So they, it would mean that they satisfy a certain uh, type of commutation relations, so similar to the canonical commutation relations we have discussed uh, in the previous uh, lecture. So and these uh, commutation relations for the uh, real space operators, A sub N, let's say A sub M dagger, we know that this is a uh, delta symbol of N and M. So um, now we want to, um, check what kind of commutation relations these guys uh, satisfy. And in order for me to work it out, to work out these commutation relations, I'm going to use an inverse Fourier transform. So let's say the first term in this uh, commutation relation, A sub Q1, uh, can be written as a sum over N1, uh, A sub N1, e to the power minus I Q1 N1. So this is uh, an inverse Fourier transform in some sense opposite to this guy here. And the second term here is going to involve a sum, let's say, over n2, a dagger n2, e to the power plus i q2 n2. And this corresponds to the Fourier transform sort of reversing this relation. So now, the commutator only uh, cares about the operator, so all, and this is a linear operation. So we can factor out in some sense the sum and we can factor out these exponentials. So and write this commutation relation as so. So it's going to be a sum over n1 and n2 e to the power i q2 n2 minus q1 n1. And here I'm going to have uh, the commutator of a sub n1 a dagger sub n2. And so if we now compare this canonical commutation relation with this guy, we're going to see that this is nothing but the delta symbol of n1 and n2, which means that it uh, sort of extracts just one uh, term out of this sum, where n1 is equal to n2. And what we can do, we can simply set n1 equals to n2, and let's say we will set n1 equals n2 and equals to some other n, and so we're going to write it as follows, so it's going to be equal to the sum, over n now, e to the power i q2 minus q1 times n, and uh, that's it. So the operators are gone. And now at this stage, we're going to use uh, finally this uh, identity, uh, the first identity that I just um, defined, and uh, we'll write the final result. So let me actually write it in red, and it's going to be equal to 2 pi delta function of q1 minus q2, or q2 minus q1. So, and this to be compared with this uh, canonical commutation relation. So, and as you can see, of course, uh, here, uh, this is in some sense a continuum version of this uh, canonical commutation relation. 
And uh, this uh, means actually that uh, these guys, A sub Q1, uh, well, A sub Q and A sub Q dagger, they too represent annihilation and creation operators. But what do these uh, creation and annihilation operators create or destroy? So unlike uh, A sub N and A sub N dagger, which uh, sort of create a local oscillations of a particular uh, side of a particular oscillator somewhere in a well-defined position in space, so these uh, A sub Q uh, and A sub Q dagger, they uh, annihilate and create waves, if you want, uh, propagating through the uh, oscillator chain. So these uh, guys are not local in space, they instead uh, create waves with a certain wave vector, and Q basically is uh, the wave vector. So here, again, I'm using the units where the uh, lengths are measured uh, in the units of um, uh, the oscillator length, so the distance between the neighboring equilibrium sides. But uh, in any case, so this is really the interpretation of what we're doing. And now if we um, plug in this expression, uh, these expressions into the Hamiltonian in the previous slide and use uh, these identities and other uh, simple algebraic manipulations, we're going to arrive at the following expression for the same Hamiltonian. So this is actually this is the very same Hamiltonian we started with, but now rewritten in terms of this A sub Q and A sub Q dagger. And, well, it's not at all obvious that this is a result, and, well, this, a, this capital A and capital B, these coefficients here have this form, and it's not obvious at all. So this actually, to so derive this guy would be a challenge for you uh, in the bonus uh, problem of your homework here.